He was right. The virus saw purred through heavy uh, vines, parted tangled underbrush like a comb through the wet hair, and sliced cleanly through a metal which the odd um, miss, missile stroke, sorry, miss stroke, brought the cutting um, edge down onto the trap. But then its teeth met the gnarled roots and twisted branches of the scrub trees. It was different, a different story. Telly grimaced as her saw bounced across the hard wood again, spitting its bits of bark at her face, its low hum transferred into a protesting howl. She struggled to force the edge down into the rough old branch. One more cut, and this section of track would be clear. Going good. You almost got it, Tally. She noticed that Croy stood well back, poised to jump if she saw somehow, <clears throat> if the saw somehow slipped from her hands. She could see now why David had wanted to chop the scrub trees into pieces. It would have been a lot easier than reaching through the tangled roots and branches, trying to bring the fiber saw to bear against a precise spot. Stupid tree, Tally muttered, gritting her teeth as she plunged the blade down again. Finally, the saw found purchase in the wood, letting out a high peach scream as it bit into the branch. Then it slipped through, free from, uh, for a second th before a th it thrust, spitting and screeching into the dirt below. Yay, Tally stepped back, lifting her goggles the saw powering down in her hands. Croy stepped forward and kicked the section of the branch away from the track. Perfect surgical slice, doctor, he said. I think I'm getting the hang of this, Tally said, wiping her brow. It was almost noon, and the sun was breaking down into the clearing mercilessly. She pulled off her sweater, realized that the morning chill was long gone. You were right about the trees giving shade. You, sa you said it, Croy said. Nice sweater, by the way. She smiled. Along with her new gloves, it was her prized possession. Thanks. What did it cost you? Six spag balls. A little pricey, pretty, though. Croy caught her eye. Tally remembered the first day you get here. got here. When a kind of, when I kind of grabbed your knapsack, I really wouldn't have taken your stuff, not without you you're giving you something for it. You just surprised me when you said I could have everything. Sure, no problem, she said. Now that she worked with Croy, it seemed like a nice, he, he was a nice enough guy. She'd rather have been teamed up with David or Shay. But those two were cutting together um, today, and it was probably time she got to know some of the other Smokies better. And you got a new sleeping bag, too, I hope. Yeah, 12 spag balls. Must be almost out of trays. She nodded. Only eight left. Not bad. Still, I bet you didn't realize on your way here that you were eating your, fa your future wealth. Telly laughed. They crouched under the partly cut tree, pulling handfuls of cut vines from around the trap. If I'd known how valuable food packets were, I probably wouldn't have eaten so many, starving or not. I didn't even like it anymore. The worst was spag ball for breakfast. Sounds good to me, Croy chuckled. This section looks clear to you. Hmm, sure, let's start on the next one. She handed him the saw. Croy did not easy part first, attacking the underbrush with the humming of the saw. So, Tally, there's one thing that's kind of confusing, and what's that? The saw glanced off metal, sending it up smattering of the sparks. The first day you were here, you said you left the city with two weeks of food. Bravery. That, that night at dinner, she ate alone. Now that she'd spent a day cutting trees herself, the wooden table in the dining hall no longer horrified her. The grain of the wood felt reassuringly solid, and tracing its whirls, her eyes, was easy, it was easier than thinking.
For the first time, Tally noticed the sameness of the food. Bread again, stew again. A couple of days ago, Shea had explained that the plump meat in the stew was rabbit. Not soya-based, like the dehydrated meat in her spag ball, but real animals from the overcrowded pen at the edge of the smoke. I thought of rabbits being killed, skinned and cooked. Suited her mood. Try, like the rest of her day, this meal tasted brutal and serious. Shay hadn't talked to her after lunch, and Tally had no idea what to say to Croy, so she'd worked the rest of the day in silence. Dr. Cable's pendant seemed to grow heavier and heavier, wound around her neck as tightly as the vines, brush, and roots grasping the railroad tracks. It felt as if everyone in the smoke uh, could see what the necklace was really uh, a symbol for her treachery. Tally wondered if she could ever stay there now. Croy suspected that she was, and it seems like it would be only a matter of time before everyone else knew. All day long, a terrible thought had crept, uh, kept crossing her mind. Maybe the smoke was where she really belonged, but she'd lost the chance by going there as a spy. I now, and now Tally had come between David and Shay. Without even trying, she'd shafted her best friend. Like wa walking poison, she killed everything. She saw, thought of the orchids spreading across the plains below, choking the life out of the other plants, out of the soil itself, selfish and unstoppable. Tally Youngblood was a weed, and unlike the orchids, she wasn't even a pretty one. Just as she finished eating, David sat down across from her. Hey! Hi, she managed to smile. Despite everything, it was a relief to see him. Eating alone had reminded her of the day after her birthday, trapped as an ugly, when everyone knew she was should be pretty. Today was the first time she uh, felt like an ugly since coming to the smoke. David reached across and took her hand. Tally, I'm sorry. You're sorry? He turned her palm up and revealed her freshly blistered your fingers. I noticed you didn't wear the gloves, not after you had lunch with Shay. It wasn't hard to guess why. Oh yeah? It's not that I didn't like them. I just couldn't. Sure, I know. This is all my fault. He looked around the crowded hall. Can we get out of here? I've got something to tell you. Tally nodded, feeling the cold pendant against her neck and remembered her promise to Shay. Yeah, I've got something to tell you too.